Hey, check it out. This is my new Ultimaker 3 extended 3D printer. I can't keep it on my desk. My shop's not that big. I need to have some sort of a rolly cart so that I can pull it out whenever it is that I need to use the printer. So let's make a printer cart. My name is Eric Strebel. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. My longtime sponsor, PCBWay, now offers rapid prototyping services. They offer 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. For 3D printing, they offer FDM, SLA, SLS, MJF, DMLS, and polyjet printing. I've ordered several SLA parts and been very pleased with the quality. Click the link in the description below to learn more about how PCBWay can help you with your next 3D printed project. This is my existing printer cart for my Ultimaker 2 Plus. It's got a gasket box at the top that I switch all my spools in and out of and holds the power supply in the back where the spools used to be. And I'm gonna make something very similar to this for my new 3D printer. As I start many projects, I'm gonna do a sketch of what it is that I'm gonna build. Even if you can't draw in perspective like this, you want to at least do a couple side views with some basic dimensions so you get a rough idea of what it is you're making. Next, I went to cutlistoptimizer.com and created a cut list of the three quarter inch MDF pieces that I was going to cut out of the full sheet of MDF to make my cart. Medium density fiberboard has no grain and it gives me a nice smooth finish when I go to paint my finished piece. Some of the parts have inside cut out concave parts so I drill those first and then I'll come back with the bandsaw round the corners and make those inside cutouts. Remember, I'm not a carpenter, I just play one on YouTube. So don't try this out at home unless you think you know what you're doing. Next, I'll use the belt sander and smooth out all the corners to make them nice and round and even. Then I'll use the spindle sander for the inside concave cutout parts. Then I'll pre-drill and countersink some of the parts before they get screwed together so it doesn't split the MDF. And finally, I'll use my router to route over the top and the bottom plates so they have a nice modern look. Here I'm mixing up some polyester glazing putty and I'm gonna fill in all the screw holes where everything has been screwed together on the cart. This will give me a nice, smooth, clean, uniform finish in the end when I go to paint the cart. Let's add a little bit of magic. This cart has a gasket container and I'm gonna mount it on its side onto the cart. So I'm gonna use some magnets to adhere the plastic container to snap into the cart. I've already applied the magnets into the back bracket and here I am hot gluing the magnets into the gasket box.
one of the really nice features that this cart has is a pull-out tool tray. It allows me to store a cart scraper, nippers, different dental tools that I use to clean up the 3D printed parts after they come off the printer. The pull handle is made out of MDF just like the rest of the cart, but in this case I'm shellacking it and clear coating it. I want to showcase this little detail and celebrate the material that the cart is made out of. This machine is a dual extruder machine. I'm removing the two spools off the back and mounting the power supply in its spot. I'm going to be using a universal power supply and moving the spool holders into the plastic gasket box. There's an NFC chip reader inside of the factory spool holder and I want to continue to use that inside of this print box. I printed out some 3D printed supports for this new spool holder and I'm removing the NFC sensor from the old spool holder. I'm going to pop that NFC sensor in there and ultimately we'll get an extension cable that I had to order from Japan so that I can continue to use this and both spools will mount there and I'll still be able to tell what kind of material I have. Drill some three and a half millimeter holes and this is how the magnetic box snaps into place. The back cover comes off. Let's load the filament through the little three and a half millimeter holes into the printer. And there you go. This is my UPS battery backup. So if the power goes out, my printer can continue to print even during a power outage. So this is the cart all put together with the unit on top of it. I really like how it turned out. I love this gasket sealed box that allows me to open the lid from the back and change out the filament without having to take out the whole box like on my original cart. I like the integrated power supply here down just below that versus being on the side. And then my additional storage box for other filament rolls I even have additional storage on the sides for more new filament boxes and some storage right here potentially for future supplies. And of course this nice little pullout tray for my tools for cleaning up my prints. So all in all, I'm very pleased with the way this printer cart turned out. It's gonna make for a really nice, flexible shop environment. Again, I want to say thanks to our sponsor, PCBWay. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.